In the spirit of last week's release of this thing, that's right, the KO Armory deck, in this week's commoner video, we're gonna be looking at a no miss, balls to the wall, armed KO deck build. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you wanna get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. Hey there, my flesh and blood friends. Welcome back to another Dice Commando video here on the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today, talking no miss KO in Commoner in honor of, of this thing. That's, that's right, I did get one. I did get one, so lucky me. And look, it's opened. It's not being... I mean, I guess it doesn't stop me from selling singles, I suppose, but it's not being hawked on the secondary market. Yes, I am. I am building, building stuff around it. So yeah, today what I want to do is talk a, a no miss KO build for Commoner. Now it's something we've kind of talked about, I honestly, I think for a couple months now, uh, Sean was running one the same weekend that I ran the KO club thing, which I think was the first Commoner crawl we had after heavy hitters, lots of stuff in play. The deck's good right now. It, the I just want to preface this coming out of the gate. This is a tier, you know, why it's a tier B deck where if, if A is the best, not not S. I don't I don't know, right? Tier one, it's a tier two if tier one is the best. It's a tier B if A is the best, and all that. I, I think it can actually race Ira. I think it's really going to struggle into Icelander for some obvious reasons, right? A lot of no blocks might disrupt your chain and so on. And if we're being honest, I think Ira might still outvalue it. But what's interesting, I think it could actually do pretty well against Bravo. And the Decimator Olympia, I think since it doesn't block, I think it probably just doesn't care. So I think it does okay into roughly half of the tier one field. Okay. So before we go into the deck list itself, now sure the links below, you can slam that into your thing. But I want to talk about two specific cards that I think are unique includes within the deck. I mean, there, there's more than two, but I like, I don't think I'm super creative on, let's start with the ones I'm not super creative on. I am running Ravenous Rabble, right? So this is a zero for five, but it's a printed five, which means it's a six, not on the chain, but obviously it'll do the minus thing, right? So it's probably a, and you know, if you look at the profile here, you probably have to assume on average, it's a three for you, okay? They go again, but remember you can chuck that for a five, that does good things. Now, where I, the reason I landed on Ravenous Rabble in this deck is I was actually at one point playing Madcap Charger. That didn't seem to really fit. So Ravenous Rabble just seemed better. And again, Ravenous Rabble is a five. So works, we'll throw it in. And then the other one I threw in was Critical Strike. I actually had this in the deck before we had Run Roughshod. Now, of course, Run Roughshod's a blue, but it's a Majestic and that's why it's Majestic. Critical Strike does okay here, right? And the, part of the reason that that works well is, you know, like a wild ride into Critical Strike, right? Off of a single blue, right? Because you're, you're, you don't have the Sash, you don't have all the resource efficiency, you do a Barkbone Strapping, that's your one kind of go, go, go. And um, I, I am running Barkbone instead of Cross Strap. You could certainly run Cross Strap and just go full out. I do like to have a little bit of block in Cross Strap. Generally, generally I found that I only need one. And that's why I'm running cross rep. Okay. Now into the two cards that I think are worth speaking to as, as interesting includes rising speed. I think this one's being significantly overlooked. If you've drawn a card, this has go again. I mean, it's, it's a two for five go again as the red. That's not super great, but if you really look at what all there, what else you have available, I think this one's okay. Uh, the block two is not great. But again, if you kind of think about the theme of this deck, it's not horrible, right? In terms of its thing. So you could potentially, again, with the right roll or the right hand, you could go wild ride into rising speed, or you could bear fangs, pop your boots into rising speed, and then get something else out of it. And that means you could potentially, you know, swinging claw is always great because you can, you know, off two blues, you can base it basically off two blues, you can do your thing, swing, and then follow up with an end maybe a blue yellow, we've got critical strike, whatever, but rising speed, you could potentially go boom, 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 right? With all actions and throw, throw quite a bit of damage. The last piece of this is zealous belting. So zealous belting itself is a two for five, kind of in line of what we've been talking about, which means that it still chucks for a six. What's very interesting about zealous belting, right? If you read it, 
while there's a card in your pitch zone with attack greater than zealous belting space. And you're like, well, all of the a vast majority of the cards in this deck are fives. All of the blues are fives, but they're not when you're in your pitch zone, right? Because of KO, right? KO only affects the combat chain. So while it's in your pitch zone, a blue five actually gives zealous belting go again, right? So I want to point that out. I think it's worth including and because it, it can also lead, right? I mean, think about it, zealous belting and the math's not super great there, but there's no card chuck that you have to do. So you could do like zealous into critical strike. You could do it, right? You could absolutely do it. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up the deck. Enough futzing around about that. So what I have for the main loadout, we have Barkbone Strapping, Beaten Trackers, Goliath Gauntlets, we have Knucklehead, and then the Claw. Okay, so only one weapon there, of course. That gives you a natural four, well, it's actually five, but functionally four armor, and then Goliath Gauntlets. Again, if you want to run Cross Strap, I completely respect that. It gives you one less armor. I kind of like the strapping, but yeah, you, you can certainly get boned. Okay, for going into the deck, we have Red, Yellow, Bear, Fangs. We have Critical Strike. I did put in Madcap Muscle. I think that the KO decks include of Savage Beatdown is functional and makes sense, and the Madcap Muscle thing's kind of a nod to that in its own little way. If you don't like that, fair enough. You can swap it out with something else. I kind of think it's a hot little play because, again, to kind of cheat ahead, we are playing Yellow and Blue windups. I think it fits really well into that to just throw that out with a blue, chuck a wind up, not only get your token, not only get the next token for the next turn, but then now all of a sudden you're swinging for nine off of an effective three card hand. I think it's pretty good, right? So that's why I put it in there. You do have Pack Hunt as just a functionally good card with the Intimidate, Pound Town, Red Blue, Predatory Assault. So Predatory Assault, if you chucked one, actually gains Dominate. Not that hard to do, right? Again, you can come Wild Ride, into Claw, into Predatory Assault with Dominate at the end. It's pretty good. Ravenous Rebels, we talked about Rising Speed. We talked about Wild Ride, Red, Yellow. Zealous Belting, Red. Agile Wind Up and Mighty Wind Up, Blue, Yellow. Assault and Battery, Blue. Smash Instinct, Blue. And then Wrecker, Womp, Romp, Blue. Uh, an earlier build of this, of course, had, or not of course, as you would suspect, did have Wrecker, Romp, Yellow. Uh, I just found that being having to have the targeted discard to play as opposed to do the draw discard was really, really limiting to what I wanted to do with this deck. So I cut the yellow and that's where the zealous bell thing actually came from. So that is, that is the deck itself. Um, going into the sideboard uh, for the inventory, I should say, I do a battlefront bastion blue. This one is not only it's a blue and it helps me being blue for Icelander, but it also is really good into the Ira match. So you could bring that in for again to block two and then it gives you the one on the back end that you're either blocking something else or not and then i went with riled up for another blue uh, because i think we're going to need a significantly higher blue profile if we're going to try and survive icelander that was kind of the logic there running three ab for icelander but you notice there's no oases there's no d reacts stuff like that uh, the deck still, the idea of the deck is even within these inventory, you still maintain no miss, right? So no matter what you do, you will not miss. That's the idea there. Even though you might not have the prevention effects that we might be used to in a lot of other things. So anyway, link is below. Give it a shot. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thanks for joining me for another midweek commenter video. If nothing else, my friends, go comment dope.